basement. This will be a series of videos showing how to make an arcade that reads uh, physical homemade uh, cartridges. In the first video we will look at the brains of the operation, hardware and software, and we will test it out launching a few games. The idea is simply to make these mini NES cartridges that launch the actual game depict on the cart. Uh, since people are impatient in nature, we will skip to the demo of the setup right now and get back to all the details later on. So for this uh, simple demo, we will uh, quickly showcase how it works. When the Raspberry Pi boots, it will boot into a custom launch screen, as we can see here. Uh, to launch a game, you choose a cartridge you have created and place it on this pad. Uh, the system will recognize the cartridge and launch the correct game. So let's uh, try Miss uh, Pac-Man for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. And as you can see, it recognizes the cartridge and displays on screen which game it's about to launch. In this uh, demo I have only created mini NES cartridges uh, with my 3D printer, but if you have uh, 3D models there's nothing stopping you from having mini SNES cartridges or mini Commodore 64 cassettes or cartridges. So the physical cartridge actually corresponds with the system the game is for. That is uh, something I will look into in the future. So let's uh, try one last uh, cartridge before we dive into the details. This is uh, one of my favorite games on the C64, so let's uh, see how it uh, behaves on the NES. When editing this, it occurred to me how superior the C64 seat music really was back in the day. So with some video trickery, let's remove the NES music and overlay the C64 music instead. I first envisioned this project back in 2016 and the idea back then was to label play an RF identification card with some game art and then utilize a NFC or RFID reader and a Raspberry Pi to launch the game on the card when it was placed on the reader. The parts were ordered but the project was never started. 
it wasn't until after I got the 3D printer and came across these uh, super cute mini NES cartridges that I restarted the project. Since an access card wouldn't fit inside the mini NES cartridge, I quickly dropped those and ordered some NFC stickers from Germany instead. I then slightly customized the mini NES cartridge I found on Thingiverse to fit these stickers inside. The customized model is uploaded back to Thingiverse and all the links can be found in the video description. Initially I planned to program each sticker with data to specify which game to load, but uh, since every sticker has its own built-in ID, one can just utilize, utilize that instead to create a map between the ID and the corresponding game to launch in software. To play the game is my project utilizes a Raspberry Pi 4, in this case a 2GB version, running the well-known RetroPi image. Using a RetroPi is probably the easiest way to set up a Raspberry Pi with many emulators ready and working. I then disable the auto start of the dashboard or the emulation station as it's known in the RetroPi config and created a custom launch screen that is loaded on boot. The custom launch screen titled the Arcade Game Central waits for an, an NFC tag to be read and then launches the appropriate game. When you exit the emulator game, you will exit back to the launch screen, awaiting a new game card to be read. Neil from RMC has done something similar in his game kiosk, where he utilizes a barcode reader to read the barcode of physical games and then map these codes to the actual game to be launched. His uh, project uses an Raspberry Pi to read the barcodes and an actual mister system to launch and play the games themselves. So why? Well, it's fun. And I've also tried RetroPie images with thousands of games and I just end up looking at them and never being able to decide what to play. And if I try one, I quickly lose interest as there are so many more to try. This is perhaps one way to try to get back to that old feeling where you have only a very limited number of games on physical cartridges. It's a little bit of actual physical work to load a new game and maybe, just maybe, that causes one to play the game a bit longer and not just jump restlessly amongst them. I plan on making a master game cartridge as well. This cartridge will launch the emulation station instead of a specific game, as it can be nice to retain that feature as well. So that's it for the first video in this series. I plan to make at least two more videos about this project, uh, one going through the setup in detail and one or two for the physical build of the arcade. Please leave a comment if there is something special you want me to focus more on. If you like content like this, be sure to like and also subscribe so that we'll meet again in the next one.